Uh, I would like to introduce our second speaker, and that is Professor Daoud Watts. He is a faculty advisor for SEAL, and he is a professor at the African American Studies Department within Temple. For, for those of you who know me, you know I walk around when I talk. And so I'm, I'm looking at uh, some of the people and they're saying, okay, let's, let's do this. I, I'd like to thank you all for coming out. SEAL is a very important organization. One of the things that uh, I think that we as Africans need in this particular environment is that we need forums that are more than social. We need forums that are actually designed to give us the intellectual, the, uh, the critical thinking skills that are going to be necessary for leadership in Africa now and forever, really. But I want to start with something else. How many people in the room are from the continent of Africa? Raise your hands. And look around you, everybody. Clap your hands. Clap for yourself. You know, one of the things that we have to understand is that the image that we have of Africa is so warped. It is so warped that it's very difficult for us to, and for, to communicate a positive sense of Africa and African agency to so many of the people in this part of the world. And one of the goals of SEAL has been to revitalize the image or revisualize Africa. We have to do that, not just because we need to have a more positive image, but because we need to be able to tell people the truth about Africa. For all these people here in this room who come from Africa, how many of these images that you see on television are from the part of Africa or from the neighborhoods that you live in? You understand? There's more to, much, much, much more to Africa than the negative images, the negative stereotypes. And we absolutely have to project that fact or those facts to the people that need it most who are the people who are Africana peoples, because not just people from Africa need Africana information. All descendants of Africa need to have a positive image of Africa as well. As a matter of fact, uh, Malcolm X, al Haj Malik Shabazz said, if you look in the mirror and don't like what you see, then you'll never have a positive image of yourself, because what you see is African. So with that, I'd like to begin a very small, short presentation talking about how youth are changing the face of Africa. But before we really get deep into the youth part, we actually have to engage Africa a little bit more because I would not be surprised if there are people in this audience who do not know of the positive uh, realities of Africa. So Africa's population now exceeds one billion people. Africa's population. Imagine the images we see on television, everything's small, isn't it? I remember seeing a movie, uh, I think it was called Sahara, recently. And in this movie, they had a scene, and under the scene, they had labeled it Lagos, Nigeria. And it was shot somewhere, I think it was shot in Morocco, actually. But, it, <laughs> but it, hey, how can you do that, right? Those of you who know Lagos say, no way, <laughs> right? But this scene was the scene of a fishing village. And Lagos has 13 million people. The population of Africa now exceeds 1 billion people. And because of that, it is now the second largest continent in the entire world, both in size and in population. That means that the population of Africa exceeds the population of North America. It means that the population of Africa exceeds the population of South America. And these are important factors. I want you to keep them in the back of your mind because it makes a difference in terms of youth and what youth can do. Finally, the image that we see is finally the small, monolithic, and insignificant Africa. Listen, I am, shall I tell you how old I am? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I turned 60 years old uh, in December. And the mo thank you very much. <laughs> and the most important part of my life was when I was your age. You just, Elizabeth just talked about the important times. I spent most of my life from when I was 19 years old to 26 years old in West Africa. And as a result, I discovered that West Africa is not what we think it is. It's certainly not what we project. I discovered that I could be myself, me, 
You know, and being born in West Africa, have the same level of, in, of education, the same level of income, the same interests. I could be the same me born in West Africa. That to me was a mind-changing, mind life-changing realization. Uh, I had this thing going. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think I've used it as much as I want to. Okay, so understanding the true size. Okay, do that way. Understanding the true size and development of Africa is the key to understanding any of the continent's real issues. We do not understand the true size of Africa. Most of what we see, and let me walk over here so you can see what I'm talking about. There's a pointer here too, isn't it? Is that working? Uh, whatever, I've got a pointer right here. <laughs> when we look at the maps that we normally see, and most of you might be aware of this, but if you're not, it'll be a revelation, I promise you. We usually see the Mercur Mercator projection. This is shown ubiquitously, everywhere, every school, even today. It shows Greenland to be about the size of Africa. Greenland is 800,000 square miles. Africa is 11,700,000 square miles. That's like taking a picture of me with Shaq. <laughs> okay? And Shaq is about this big. <laughs> you see? So when we understand, we realize that a projection like the Peters projection is more realistic in terms of its size. The entire southern hemisphere is made 12 times smaller than it actually is in the Mercator projection, which we still use in, in most schools today. So we have to understand if we are going to engage any issue, any issue at all, engaging Africa, involving Africa, we have to understand that our understanding and our perspective of the size of Africa is the most important thing we need to do. Each region, size, is critical to understanding Africa. Each region of this vast continent has unique resources and challenges. Each region, not just one region or the other region, every region. Urbanization is significant throughout the entire continent. For example, when we look at Northeast Africa, we're looking at a region of Africa that's two and a half million square miles that has peoples of all different types. And that's why when I did these collages, I wanted you to see some of the peoples that they have, some of the variety and diversity of peoples that are there. West Africa, very significant. West Africa is about the size of the continental United States. And it has, are you ready for this? About 240 million people. That means that West Africa, see we always talk about Africa's poverty, Africa doesn't have this, everything's about. What is, what's the upside of Africa? The upside is its greatness, its size, its resources, its people. And so what you look at when you look at West Africa, we see a part of Africa that's the size of the United States and comparable in population. Nigeria is a great example. Ni there you go. Go ahead. <laughs> give, you, give Nigeria a hand. Here. You know, Nigeria um, is about twice the size of Pennsylvania. A little bit more than twice the size. Yet, Nigeria has, you ready for the 74 cities with over 100,000 people. 74 cities with over 100,000 people. Th Pennsylvania has four. You see? Next, please. So when we look at all the regions of Africa, Northwest Africa, Equatorial and East Africa, we see this tremendous potential, tremendous urbanization, tremendous resources, tremendous positive energy. We see even in Africa's islands, you know, major cities, major industries. All of these things are very important in terms of our understanding of what the realities of Africa and what the potential of Africa is. In Southern Africa, we know about the development and the resources in Southern Africa as well. Next, please. Thank you. Uh, so, today there are over 660 million people in Africa who are 25 years or younger, youth. Within our lifetimes, we expect that that number of people will exceed 1 billion people. 
So when we talk about youth, next please, changing the face of Africa, what are we really talking about? Are we talking about just having a few people and a few young perspectives? No, we're talking about an entire continent, a vast continent, 11,700,000 square miles, with over 50 cities of a million or more, with resources everywhere. We're talking about that particular piece of this world, that great big chunk of planet Earth, being populated with young people. So youth. Youth and youth's role in the uh, transformation, if you will, of Africa is very important. And listen, so many times we are told Africa is centuries behind. That is simply not true. In 1800, they, you know, Europeans were just beginning to use coal in 1800. There were no bicycles, all of these things. You all know that there were no cars in 1900, just a couple here and there. The Model T doesn't come out until 1904. There were no planes, no radios, no televisions. All the things that we associate with modernity are recent. So that Africa is not centuries behind. Never let anybody tell you that again. And the challenges of modern Africa reflect the scale and level of development that will challenge African youth in unprecedented ways. Next, please. The coming generation, or this coming generation of African leaders must face the combined challenges of modern development, youth leadership, and global engagement. All of these issues will still be defined, still be defined by Africa's great size and diversity. The young people that you're going to hear today, it might sound to you like they're talking about a small part of Africa, but let me lay this on you. There is no small part of Africa. Every part of Africa is big. Africa is a giant continent, and I would like to think that the uh, potential of Africa and African peoples is equal to the giant task at hand. Next, please. Today, as we discover some youthful leaders and their projects, we challenge SEAL and Temple University community to support their efforts, to revisualize Africa, to study Africana history, and to encourage the development of future African scientists and professionals, and to do all we can to empower this wonderful, massive, new generation of African youth. Thank you very much.